Hey you guys, John Britt here. Hey, I got a video for you on combinations. Cause I, I thought I should do that. I'm not sure why, but I did. All right, glaze combination grid is what I'm calling this. Over, under, I don't really know what the name of this is. Even though I've done it many times, it's just a over, under grid is what I call it. So it may have a name, but um, so let me just give you an overview before I start. So what I did is I took seven glazes this way and seven different glazes on the top. And I glazed, on this one I glazed two coats of this RR6 on all those tiles, two coats of sea foam, two coats of Arebe, etc. And then I took two coats of this John's Nickel and went down here, two coats here. So it's actually a very easy way and systematic way to, to um, glaze uh, for combinations. The factor that varies is how long, you know, what a dip means and how thick the glaze is. So as long as you keep it relatively consistent uh, and you hold it for a certain amount of time, but I'm going to show you how that can differ. Because, you know, when you're sitting there doing these things for hours, you make mistakes and you hold it too long or all this stuff. All right, so then I have some tiles where I tried to re, I mean, some cups I tried to reproduce that. And I'll show you those. Then I'll show you my book, how I keep records. Then I'm gonna show you the opposite way. I did two coats of the top first and then two coats of the side over. So you get completely different effects that way with this way. Same glazes though. And then I tried to reproduce it on these cups, and I'll show you that and how I messed up, uh, etc. And then I'm going to show you the glaze recipes so you don't have to worry that you don't have them. And um, I'm going to show you where to find more combinations. There's a Facebook group that Joanne Honey uh, Thomas made up called Exploring Mid Range Glazes Together with John Britt's book. And, there, and there, there's another one on High Fire. And on there is a bunch of, uh, you can just search for combinations on there and you'll get more than you ever wanted. All right, the sun has come out, so may get better lighting here. All right, let me show you now. Okay, I'll also, I fired this to cone six with the cycle E1, which is a fast fire cycle. Okay, so I'm going to go through this slowly. So you can just see what these look like, because I didn't do all of them. There's plenty of information here for you. Um, so this would be two coats of RR6, which just so you know, it's Randy's red base, and I put took, left out the colors, and I put in 6% cobalt. The reason I have these buckets here is because I did a, I did a, a, a video on this uh, cobalt uh, spotting glazes and I had cups left over. So here's what they look like. Then with, this is Lynette, Alabama rain on top, Lynette's opal on top, Heath, uh, Heath AV2. This is, uh, with Jen's Juicy Fruit on top, uh, et cetera. So the glazes on top, you can see what they are. And then I did sea foam with the same glazes. Hopefully the sun. So that has possibilities. Some of these were nice. It's hard to see too, but you can see that uh, this is the watercolor blue green over top for th uh, for this like 38 one. Okay, hopefully you can back it out if you if you you know which one it was. So you can see here now I did Celsa Rebe and then put those on top. So 
it's there's a pattern here that uh, Alabama rain and Lynette's opal have rutile in them and you oftentimes can just look down that row and see that you get some good results just from that combination okay so we're I think I was here but there's still other ones that are good like that one's pretty nice too um, this one was the one that was very nice it was first seltzer temaku two coats and then two coats of um, John's nickel Alabama rain Lynette's opal Heath Jen's watercolor and this was seltzer chun with cobalt and root teal and I'm not really showing you the back but there's lots of information on these tiles and then I'm going to show you how I tried to reproduce them all right so this one is Temuk, uh, Temaku Gold that one's one I tried to reproduce I'll show you that one's pretty good I didn't reproduce it but it looks good now and the last one I put two coats of this Pike's Purple and then I put all the ones at the top on thin so nickel Alabama Lynette's Ape Heath Jen's Juicy Fruit this one's pretty good uh, watercolor blue green let's see what the back of that looks like because that's a kind of a nice matte gloss look this one's also very good because there's lots of colors happening in there a little bit of pinholing where it's thick I did it extra thick on the side so some of these tiles I, I probably dipped two coats of the Pikes purple one coat of the seltzer chun with cobalt and rutile and then probably on an angle did uh, the second coat so I could see what one and two coats look like all right so now what I did was I picked the ones I liked like I like this I like this one so I did that's number 35 I liked these two and so I did those then I did versions of those and then 49 I like this one so I put that there All right and these are my attempt at uh, reproducing them pretty good now inside I put uh, seltzer temaku because I wanted to keep it uh, the same because this was seltzer Aribe and I didn't want them crack sometimes they crack if they don't have a good fit so I tried to keep the base pretty close and then it, what I was showing you is that it bled down there a little bit. But that might be nice. You might uh, like that. And the last one was okay. Not quite, as, not quite the same as the tile. Although, if I turn the tile over, yeah. It's a pretty nice model, modeling. And, and this, more when it starts melting more, it, it runs then the tile held pretty steady okay but you could adjust that by lowering your heat a little or changing your application a little so here's number 35 which was Lynette's opal over the seltzer I think this was less successful even though it still looks good it didn't have this milkiness hanging up as much so anyway, these are like Tang Dynasty, uh, sort of runny, drippy iron uh, in a copper. Anyway, okay, this was a nice one. This was a number 41, so it was Seltzer Temaku with, um, that was this one here, Seltzer Temaku with Alabama Rain on top. So Alabama Rain has a, a root teal, and I believe 
about, I believe about 10%. And we've actually done it up to 14. So it's got a nice look. And the tiles or the cups came out pretty good. A little bit of crawling there. Uh, but held up pretty good. So you can see some crawling. I was trying to see if on the tile, if I, yeah, I do have crawling there. So the tile is actually telling me uh, very similar things to what the cups are. Okay, so the crawling can be from many things. One, one could be thickness, and one could be that the, oftentimes these glazes don't have much um, clay in them. Like this seltzer, I don't think it has many, much clay, so you may have to add more bentonite or CMC to, to get it to tr try to not crawl as bad. Uh, this one also crawled pretty bad. This was also Seltzer Temaku. Um, and then, so here was the cups. Pretty true to the tile. A little more dark, a little more dark, a little more running down, so you may have to adjust. But this one was a lot of crawling. Now, whether I did these very fast and then it, they were wet going in and they crawled that way or what uh, I'm not sure why, uh, but I would have to try them again. But I'm going to leave that up to you. Another method could be that um, because what you would do is look at this set and see if all of the seltzer this one didn't crawl at all. So it could be the combinations that's causing it. Um, let's see if these none of these other ones crawled. So. Could be I put it on too thick on these. Another option is to take, since I'm using Lynette's Opal on the top, I could take Lynette's Opal, leave out the colors, and then put in iron, 10% or so. I think that this one had 11% iron. And use that underneath my original Lynette's Opal and see if I can get them to fit better on there. All right, so then what I did, uh, so I messed around, I, I just wanted to mess around with Lynette's Opal and see if I could get some better color combos here. And this was with two coats of this uh, with one coat of Lynette's. Uh, and see uh, what happens is if I, you know, this doesn't cross with Lynette's Opal. Uh, so I, I just made a, take a guess because I had the top, the cup sitting there. And, you know, I knew that it had good possibilities. Anytime you put a high rutile glaze over a cobalt glaze, you usually get some good stuff. And uh, then I did it with Alabama Rain on top. So that had some good possibilities too. So a lot of this stuff can be changed and look a lot different depending on how thick you put it on, what clay it's on, how hot you fire it, if you soak it. So you're going to have to mess around with that yourself. Now I'm going to show you this one because this one, <laughs> they don't look at all like the tile. Well, a little bit, not really though. So you see what happened here was I probably put this Temaku Gold on two coats and then I put Lynette's Opal on top, but it's probably thin. And on my piece, I probably put the Temaku Gold on uh, too thick and it's also crawling, no crawling on the tile. So that might give you an indicator that it could be thickness related that the crawling is. So I would do a thinner coat of the Temaku Gold and try again. But, you know, some of this is very nice anyway, so. And then here was a one where I, I think I put it on even thicker, and that was nice. 
So you can see that within one tile set, like this, you saw how many variations I can get just from that. So once you zero in on which of these you like and start trying to reproduce them, you're gonna have a countless other variations that are generated. And also what I did was I thought I had a bucket of the glaze, seltzer base, and you know I probably made Aribe and Temaku and something else and then I thought well I'll just try manganese 10 and so this was a set that came after and I put Lynette's opal on top of it so I got similar results and this is Alabama rain on top of it so that's how you can once you isolate what you're liking mainly the seltzer base with the Lynette's and the Alabama, you can do a whole color series and generate your own tiles. All right, so here we go again. And this one is two coats of the top glazes first. Same glazes and then in reverse, then two coats of this over. So you can see just the way these look compared to these. Completely different. Same glazes though. So I'll go through these again. And um, so I put this Randy's Red with Cobalt on first. Oh no, I'm sorry. I put these on first, two coats of nickel. It went all the way down here. And then two coats of Alabama Rain. I like that. And then now I put this RR6 on top. Those were nice. I'll tell you why they, I don't have a tile there in a second. This was actually quite nice. It's kind of matte. I didn't, I don't, did I do that one? I'm, I don't think I did that one. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. Then I did, uh, the seafoam on top, one to two coats. That's nice. Not that I need to tell you what's nice, but you can decide on your own. You know, there's ones that I liked. Okay. Then I got Celsa Aribe here. That's nice. This is showing the copper red from the Heath AV2 with silicon carbide. Then um, this is the Jen's Juicy Fruit, two coats. And this is Seltzer Chun with two cobalt and two rutile. And then I put Seltzer Aribe on top thin. Okay, this is the Temaku on top. Some of these are nice. See, that's nice because it's sort of a matte glaze on, and then this glossy on top forms these. Uh, they're trying to bubble through or melt it more. All right, and then here is oh, I got to do Temaku Gold. There's that's a very, that's a nice one too. Lots of possibilities here, kids. And then Seltzer Chun. That's that silicon carbide electric red pushing through. Uh, and you can see pinholes. You can see problems that develop. So you're going to hope your tiles tell you stuff. Like this one shows it's probably going to crawl. You may or may not like that. Some people, you know, a lot of people like that as uh, like on tea bowls, it, it's uh, just interesting looking. That's very nice. So a lot of this, like I'm saying, is going to be uh, varied on the application, how long you hold it in, how thick the glaze is. So you're going to have to mess with that. Now, the reason this whole row is missing is because they're here. And I decided when I was looking at them 
that they looked real thick. And I know that that watercolor blue green is like super runny. And so I put them on uh, two drip trays actually and, and it stuck to the one and I broke the other off. But that saved my shelf. But it also made me uh, lose my few of my tiles here. All right. So then once again, I tried to reproduce that. So I liked this one, which was 70. I'm gonna put 74 there. I'm gonna do 81, which I liked. 88, which I liked. You can see I liked this sort of whole row. 95, 112. I like this 112. 91, I like this one here. Okay, you, but you can see there's a plenty more in here that were had possibilities, so you can try those. All right, let's see how, <laughs> see how I did. Not the greatest, because it's, a, it's not thick enough. It's not doing, uh, you know, the fun stuff that this was doing. So I would have to try it again, and maybe make, I, what I would probably want to do is make this Alabama, uh, was that? Yeah, no, Lynette's Opal thicker, because it looks much thicker, and it, uh, this is trying to get there, but not quite. And then this one uh, was, I messed up the numbering because I dipped it wrong, but it turned out it was, it's this tile. So thankfully I, you know, kept good notes. And you got a little bit of it happening there. A little more here, like right in there, it was more like the tile but not the greatest, it was, it was okay. Um, like what I did on the interior of this, I tried to use Lynette's Opal on both the sides, so that way you don't get cracking. Sometimes when you put two different glazes on, in and out, you can get a, a mismatch of fit, tries to crack them, so sometimes I try to have the same interior one as I have on the exterior. So I like this 81. Uh, and so this had like, this was Seltzer Chun with uh, the, the Cobalt and Rutile, and then I had the Aribe on top of it. And so that gave me the green, copper green. So that was, that was quite nice, fairly close to the tile too. Okay, then 88 was over here, it was, uh, a little, it's a little better than the tile because it bled through a little more. This is pretty, it, it's stuff happening in there, but this is, you know, more, more action. Yeah, this one was kind of similar to the tile. This was closer to the tile. But that shows you the variation you're going to get when you glaze the tile versus the pieces. Sorry, I don't have two hands to show you this. That's why they're all rolling around. Here's um, trying to match this tile, which is pretty good. This was a little, this was probably much thicker um, than the piece. Now this one was 95. So I made, I made an error on my numbering, but I corrected it. But I'm gonna try to maybe turn these over and just show you then, here's the tile, here's the pieces. So I've got a range of them, you know, some are probably too thin, some are probably a little too thick, and then when you're on a big vertical piece, it's, but it shows you approximately what would happen. Okay, that was a pretty good uh, set to see the range. And then this one is 112. It's Lynette's with pikes. So sometimes what I'll do is write on the bottom, then I don't have to look up the number. And I just put these numbers on front for you with a Sharpie. These are with, uh, you know, for high fire marking. It doesn't quite look like it, <laughs> but it still looks good. Um, 
And then the last one, I'll turn these all over, was um, another group trying to match this tile, 116, which was the last one in the set. And I wrote down Seltzer with Cobalt and Root Teal and Pike's Purple over top. So this tile is actually fairly close to this one. Not quite this one. A little bit of that happening right there. And then this doesn't really look, this looks similar to, to that one. So there's good possibilities that you can reproduce that and then find some decent variation. All right, so now let me show you before I finish up, these are the glazes. And I tried to write on here, uh, it's in the book. Randy's Red is in the book on page 88. And then I left a colorants out and added 6% cobalt. So that's the recipe. Here's Seafoam. Here is Seltzer Aribe. And this is Seltzer Temaku. So they just we just swapped the copper for iron. This is Seltzer Chun, page 79. This is Pike's Purple, page 125. John's Nickel, page 147. It's in the yellow section, but it's, I think it's called John's Nickel One or something. Alabama Rain, which is just a glaze I tested for a workshop, and it, it has, it's on glazy.org, but that's the recipe. And we even upped this to... Uh, 14, which wasn't too bad. And then Lynette's, page 76. That's a great glaze. Everybody loves this glaze layering. It's super fantastic. And then here's Walter He's AV-2. And I added, I took, left his colorants out and I added this to make it a, a called a artificial reduction red or a electric red. There's many names for them, but they'll, the silicon carbide makes it uh, in glaze reduction. And here's Jen's Juicy Fruit, which is always hazardous. It's on page 177, and I added cobalt. Here's the original recipe, but I added cobalt. Uh, the reason I say it's hazardous is it's got all this, not hazardous, just for running. And this has got so much lithium, so much soda ash, and, and no, not much clay. And this is uh, another hazard. This is the one that ran that I showed you on the tile. You, there's no clay in here, so that's the refractory. Bunch of lithium and a ton of copper. Eight, eight coppers a lot. Okay, and then here is the Seltzer Chun with Cobalt and Rutile. Page 79, that's a, the base recipe. And then these were the colorants. I had done a video on a line blend of co cobalt and rutile, and these were the glazes left over, so that's why I had that. All right, and I think that's it. Oh, I wanted to show you my book. So here's how I kept the notes for this. So I will draw up a little chart. So 19, 20, 21 are all these glazes. That's the top. And then the 68, 69, 70 are all these glazed. And so they're at the bottom. And then I make a code here. This one is two coats of the side glazes, two coats of the top. And then this bottom one is two coats of the top first, two coats of the side second. And then any other variations I'll put in here. And I'll try to say something about running and all that. All right. I hope that was good for you. And if you make a thousand of those by tomorrow, we'll be all set.